Hi everyone, I'm Donovan, Head Director of Training and Breeding at Canine Control. Just go get the Hi everyone, this is Donovan and you're watching Canine Control TV. We would like to bring you all back with us to part two of our series on the 2013 Schutzhund World Championships for German Shepherd Dogs. This week we would like to focus on a few protection routines in order to describe for our viewers both the objectives and the errors that make up the scoring and competitive aspect of this great sporting event. While we couldn't tape every single dog at the event, we have some excellent examples of both the thrill of victory as well as the agony of defeat. That's what I'm talking about right there. Philadelphia. Philadelphia freedom. Don't you know I love, love, love you? Yes, I You're do. You're going on television, I am. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm promoting your products. That's what we want. They'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be flocking, flocking in here. How long have you been doing this? I know you for freaking ever. Well, I, I came out on the road in uh, two, the same year they hit the World Trade Center, 2001. 2001? Yeah, uh, well, well, that's when I started doing this. I've been doing a little bit of Schutzen before that. Uh, it's so good to see you. You too. The first exercise in Schutzen 3 protection is the searching of the blinds for the hidden bad guy. The dog has to upon direction of the handler, search around in a crisscross fashion six standing blinds with the last blind holding the hiding bad guy. Here you see a dog that's doing an excellent job following the handler's both physical and verbal direction. The dog has to search each blind completely circling it, looking at inside the blind for a potential bad guy. When the dog upon finds the bad guy in the blind, the dog has to repetitively bark. Any distraction by the dog looking away, lack of attentiveness, nipping at, biting, or bothering of the decoy are all considered faulty. This entire time that the dog is repetitively barking, the handler is walking to a designated place about five paces behind the dog. There you quickly saw a flash of the handler's head. On a signal from the judge, the dog is called away from the decoy and to the handler's side. Here's a second dog, which actually was my favorite in the trial, in the protection phase, um, showing very intense guarding, very rhythmic barking, and high attentiveness to the decoy, all without touching, nipping, bothering, or biting the decoy at all. During this entire phase, the handler is again approaching from downfield. Prior to this scenario, the dog had searched the additional other blinds flawlessly. You can see that this takes a considerable amount of concentration on the dog's part. And there's the dog called back to heel. Here, unfortunately for the American team, we have a dog that will not leave the handler's side after searching five blinds and fails to go to the sixth blind. At this point, the dog is unfortunately disqualified. The handler leashes his dog and removes him from the field. The next series of exercises following the blind search is the escape of the decoy and then what is known as the defense. The decoy tries to escape, the dog has to release him immediately on one command, goes back into his guarding phase and then the decoy tries to run the dog off by charging directly at him and it also involves two hits with the padded stick. When the man freezes, it's important that the dog does not anticipate the out and follows the command of the trainer. Again, we see very intense, repetitive barking, which is of a very high quality. 
the next exercise is the transport of the decoy from the rear and an attack. Here you have an excellent example of the dog healing in perfect position and then immediately attacking the decoy when he turns to face the handler. In this case, now we see a dog who does this exercise quite faultily. He is going out of position away from his handler and is actually next to the decoy by the time the decoy turns to perform the attack exercise. We watch the worlds, of course. How often does it come to this area? I don't currently can compete in Schutzen. I compete in AKC Obedience, Rally, and uh, Confirmation. I have an Akita and a Doberman Pinscher. I think I was born into to dogs. Uh, actually, it was a pretty natural transition. I used to uh, ride and compete and show horses. So as I grew older, dogs just seemed to uh, be a natural transfer. They're easier and cheaper to transport. The final exercise in Schutzen is the long attack, also known as the courage test, and the re-attack. This involves a basically 100-yard attack where the decoy runs directly at the dog. The dog is scored on the speed of his entry, the power the deep the depth of his grip and also the crispness of his response to the handlers commands this dog unfortunately right now is about to make a fatal error if you notice the dog attacks the decoy before the decoy moves did you see that unfortunately I believe that that dog actually had fundamentally the best training in the entire trial this dog makes no such mistake, and I believe scores a 97, which is an excellent rating, and I believe is the high score protection for the weekend. Again, the level of concentration of the dog is important, as it takes a long time for the handler to walk the required distance back to the dog. This entire time, the dog cannot look around or lose interest in the decoy in any way. There's one final exercise which you're about to witness. This final exercise involves disarming and transporting the decoy to the judge. And the dog receives a thunderous applause. Great teamwork. Here we have a dog who does just an average job. He does not enter into the grip as powerfully as the previous dogs. And he also makes the error of anticipating the out command and letting go before he's told. Now this dog, he misses the grip. This cost the dog considerable points. This final dog fails and is disqualified for failure to out after the long attack. You have three opportunities to, for the dog to release his grip. You see the judge waving his hands in the background signaling to the uh, handler to come and retrieve his dog that his dog has been disqualified. The issue with this particular dog is in this case so severe at this moment that the handler comes all the way up next to the dog and tells the dog to release and the dog still doesn't release. At that point the judge instructs the handler to leash his dog and they release the sleeve to the dog. Obviously a disqualification. Very unfortunate. I'd like to point out that I have great respect for all of the time and dedication that these people have put into their dogs to compete at this level.
This is history right here. This is Andre Apatella. He's one of the most famous Schutzen trainers in the Northeast region of the United States. And you and I go back quite a way, oh don't we? Oh my God. How, many, how long would many you say? Years. How long would many, you say? Many, Tell years. Me. I don't 30 years? At least. At least 30 years. At least 30 years. 30 years. And the closest to a dog is this man right here in Instincts. He, he can read a dog better than anybody. <laughs> there you go. Andre, you're a hell of a dog trainer. Listen, my man's going to ask you a couple questions about Schutzen okay. and just how you got started. Okay. I yeah. realize I wanted to point this out. You know you might be on TV and that's okay no with problem. you, right? No problem. I've been involved since 1984. I have, under my belt, I probably have more than 15 nationals. Qualified for the world more than five times. Involved in the world championship several times. And uh, trained about 33 dogs from zero to Schutzen 3 in national event. I have trained other breeds for other people, but I, I choose the German Shepherd to be my breed, yes. I chose the German Shepherd because of their commitment, the, actually the self-responsibility, responsibility to the master and um, to me there's nothing like it. Dominic and I go back many many years when him and his father started the club of the yoga miner and uh, I went there with my first dog and uh, started training and um, he he actually introduced me to a lot of the people and a lot of the ways of training uh, back then so when I came back from Germany the first man that I met after that was was Dominic and he was already very much involved in Schutzen as a matter of fact I think he was the only uh, guy that at the age of 13 tied over a Schutzen 3 bitch German Shepherd so he's very talented and uh, really really good in dogs That's what's lacking in this country. Like in these foreign countries, they have young kids coming up, growing up in this sport. Like we have baseball and football. And that's how I grew up. But in our country, there's not a lot of young people getting involved in this because the politics of protection dogs is holding back the sport from growing. Robert Nobbs. Um, I got associated with Schutzen through two friends of mine, Dom Donovan and Patrick Carvey. Uh, me and Patrick Carvey were training dogs on the side and we thought we had some really good dogs and well trained dogs. And when we got into the forum of Schutzen, we realized that we could take our dogs to another level. And through Patrick Carvey and uh, Dom Donovan, we uh, start taking our dogs that way. And that's basically how I got involved.
And today we're sitting here right on the sidelines of the World Championship at Schutzenschell. Here we have two strange characters. One guy in the back in the red top hat ringing a cowbell and waving a Swiss flag is somebody I don't know. The guy, however, down in the left is the famous Philly Wayne, having a few beers with the boys and watching the Schutzen World Championships, undoubtedly on the phone making an excuse to his wife. Hi everybody, and thanks for watching Canine Control TV. I'd also like to say a word here about animal rescue. I'd like to thank the countless animal shelters, humane societies, and private citizens who have fostered and helped to adopt out the millions of animals that remain in our shelters today that have no permanent homes. And I'd like to take this moment also to encourage you to please consider adoption as an option for your new pet. And don't forget to subscribe to our show at youtube.com slash canine control TV show. Also, you can check us out at our website, caninecontroltv.com, or look us up on Facebook, Canine Control TV. Thanks a lot again for watching, and don't forget to adopt. Not my show! Productions.